memorial of course, uh, trolley. Yeah. And Sue's just snatching a bottle of something cheeky, I think. What have you got there? I have. Well, it's World Vermouth Day today, so I've grabbed uh, a bottle of vermouth. It's I've gone with the. It is. It is. <laughs> World Vermouth Day. Of World course it is. Vermouth Happy Day. Vermouth Day, everyone. Yeah. I'm celebrating um, Vermouth Day <laughs> by having some tap water and an orange. Yeah. Mm, nice. But yes, you're normally an ingredient in a martini or, you know, a Negroni, but you can have it on its own with soda water. Very delicious. Thank you very much for being topical um, <laughs> with the trolley. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> excellent trolley news. Yeah. Um, so today's confession comes from Nigel. Nigel, thank you very much. Uh, Simon uh, and Ms. Yin and Mr. Yang. I'm anticipating a balanced view, says Nigel. Yeah. Let, can I just say, today's uh, confession does contain 1970s educational attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. That was a flying chalk. Let me paint the worse. Oh, really? <laughs> Let me paint a picture, says Nigel. It's the early summer of 1971. I'm 14 years old and approaching the day I'll be leaving school forever and starting my engineering apprenticeship soon after approaching my 15th birthday during the summer holes. So this is different times. Yeah. My friends and I are draped in the fashion of the day. Hair, number one crop with razor side parting. Tops, casual. Fred Perry tennis shirt, smart. Strides casual, Levi's 501 jeans with half-inch turn-up, oxblood red Dr. Martin oh, boots, yeah. coats nice. casual, smart, and now the big one, which will become all too clear, single-breasted, all-wool, navy blue, crombie overcoat, complete with silk handkerchief held in place with a diamond-cut tie-pin in the breast pocket. Yes, Father Simon, we are fully-fledged skinheads, but nice skinheads. Mm -hmm. We are tasty, or so we thought. So it's a fairly average lunch break that I'm telling you about here. And three or four of us are hanging out in the fourth-floor cloakroom when something catches my eye. It's the lining of a discarded, 50s-style, double-breasted gabardine raincoat, complete with plastic belt buckle and buttons. Who would possibly be seen in such a ridiculous garment, I thought. No wonder it was in the bin. It had been discarded. Anyway, back to the lining, which had caught my eye. It was beautiful. It was a two-turned silk material. Look at this, says I. Wouldn't it make great handkerchiefs for our crombies? Well, let's have some, says Richard, <laughs> my best mate at the time. That's how it's written. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. he's in the Sweeney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We then proceeded to cut 12-inch squares out of the lining and use them to replace our existing handkerchiefs in our crombies. So it's the morning of the next day and our mood was to be abruptly changed. We are all seated in a row in the school hall waiting for the headmaster to arrive and conduct the whole school assembly. Nine o'clock came and went. Five minutes went, ten minutes went, fifteen minutes went. All the time we were being shushed by teachers every time anyone opened their mouths. Finally, at nearly 9.30, in flounced Grimes, the headmaster, all mortarboard and black gown flowing as he tore up the steps to the stage. I expect you're wondering why I've kept you all here. <laughs> at, this yeah. point, at this point, Father Simon, to be honest, we couldn't give a monkey's. No. It just meant less maths or English or whatever it was for our first lesson of the day. So he continued... I have spent the last hour with an extremely angry and distraught mother who presented me with her son's gabardine raincoat that had been cut to ribbons in a vicious act of callous vandalism. In complete unison, we all slowly put our right hands to our top left pockets of our crombies and pushed the offending uh, items yeah. deep down yeah. into the pocket so as not to be seen. Now, it's not for the act of what you could see as vandalizing the raincoat, but actually was just recycling, that I beg forgiveness. As a parent myself, now I know the cost of these things. So on reflection, I know it was an inexcusable act that should not go unpunished, even if I did really believe it was an abandoned item of clothing. It's what happened next. Grimes, the head teacher's rant, went on for some time, a bit like Antonio Conte. <laughs> yes. I just added How that. How true. About how it was unacceptable in his school. And then finally the crescendo statement. A number of third-year boys 
was seen in the vicinity of the fourth floor cloakroom yesterday lunchtime. Therefore, I want every boy from the third year outside my office straight after assembly, where I intend to cane each and every one of you. I have to tell you, Father Simon, the rub was we were all in the fourth year at the time. Oh, so... Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Each time we each time we changed lessons, we had to pass the headmaster's office with a new bunch of victims from the year below us awaiting their unjustified fate. These were the SWATs, Father Simon, who had been model students until this time. So it is for the inadvertently uh, subjecting these 50, 50 plus 50 <laughs> victims wow. of an unjust autocratic judicial system that I ask forgiveness. Hindsight is a sometimes dish served cold. If I could put back time and put aside my dedication to the fashion of the day, although we did look quite cool, says Nigel in his opinion. I'm not sure that fashion has got much to do with it, although I see fashion has got everything to do it's with it. It's got everything to do with it. Because it's yeah. the lining that attracted him and yeah. his chums in the first place. Let's see where we go with Sister Susie, the voice of authority. Well, I feel like what Nigel did here is he acted a bit too quickly because... You know, what he should have done is left it a couple of days, maybe a bit longer, to see if that jacket was still there and was really abandoned. Because, you know, in the pub, we get lots of lost property. Oh, and you can't, just t- you can't just take something the first day. But if it's still there after a month, then, may- then maybe you can. I don't know. But um, I do feel like it wasn't fair for the third years. So, therefore, I'm not going to forgive Definitely you, Nigel, because you should have owned up. Definitely not fair on the third years. Uh, brother from another guy? Well, I mean, am I alone here in thinking that a, it had been been abandoned. I mean, it felt like it had been there for ages. No one was claiming this gabardine raincoat. And so they put it to good use. They were recycling. They were well ahead of their time in recycling the guy. And it turned out that it didn't need to be recycled. But really, that's the fault of the child that left the raincoat there for so long. Hmm, think oh, about that. So and it's also, like it's not their fault that a bunch of third, of third years are getting caned. It's the system. It's the man. And specifically, <laughs> Mr. Grimes. Grimes, Grimes their yeah, teacher. yeah, yeah. It's him that needs to be asking forgiveness. So for that reason, nothing to forgive. Completely forgiven. 